A few fans got a little upset when I did my last cringiest metal bands ranking. So let's do it again. You better shut your mouth and bite your tongue, cause you don't wanna piss off anyone. And once again, I'm cringe, you're cringe, let's just embrace it and laugh together and escape from much more serious topics for at least a few minutes. And notably, most of the bands this time were audience requested. So why not start with a big band in Megadeth? So Dave has his cringy moments for sure, but to me, he just comes off as that kind of like not so PC, wacky uncle who says crazy shit at Thanksgiving dinner and you just sort of shrug it off. As for the music, I think it's easier to argue that Dave's vocals are are bad rather than cringe. Peace, peace. <laughs> Lyrics are definitely hit and miss with some particularly bad ones like weakness runs in your family, but what runs in mine is death. The UN is right. You can't be any more un than you are right now. The un is undone. And basically all of 1000 times goodbye. But goddamn is the guitar work pretty much always on. And I'd say similar to Metallica on the previous video, Maybe a little cringe, but not that bad. All right, then let's talk about a couple highly requested ones. Let's, let's go with Ailstorm, all right? So pirate metal, yeah. You say it out loud and it's definitely corny, but I love all styles of folk metal and I appreciate music that also just makes me smile in this, again, overly serious world that we live in. So I'm more than happy to throw on some swashbuckling LARPing gear and just blast this stuff. Cringe, yes, but I have a lot of fun with it, so cringe but fun. Let, let's do a potentially more divisive one here. So Parkway Drive. Now, I have frequently taken jabs at this band before, but generally not due to cringe, more so because I just find their music to be so overrated and kind of derivative of better bands in the genre. How dare you? But now it seems like they have entered into full cringe territory with the new singles, Glitch being a prime example. A glitch in the cortex, like a ghost in the shadow. Easily one of the worst things I've heard this year and just beyond cringe from the lyrics to the delivery. They haven't done enough of this yet to warrant them going higher on the list, but the trajectory isn't looking good. So I'm going to put them at mid cringe. Oh, here's a good one. Another highly requested one that I definitely agree with. Let's talk about Man of War. Now we could get into what happened with the former guitarist, but we're talking about cringe, not necessarily literal depraved and criminal behavior. But even throwing that out, there is plenty to talk about and a reason why so many of you probably asked me for their inclusion. Similar notes here as when we talk about Sabaton, which we'll get to, but amplify that by like 10,000 and add a big heaping dose of manly man shirt attitude. Which I mean, props to them for those physiques, and I was gonna make a joke about them getting older, but honestly, they still look pretty good for their age. Once more though, it's the melodrama and even more so the lyrics. Like, I can think of no better example to highlight here especially than the song Pleasure Slave, which not only opens with literal orgasm noises, but ultimately is basically about R-wording sexy slave girls that they've taken for their own. Woman, be my slave. That's gonna be a fucking yikes for me. Holy shit. It gets worse. Speaking of which, probably the most highly requested band of all the comments on the previous video, to the point where I was kind of kicking myself for not including them in the first one. We got to talk about Falling in Reverse and particularly Ronnie Radke. Now I'm just gonna address this section directly to Ronnie because he is most definitely the type of person who would watch this. He frequently reacts to content about himself on Twitch. So first of all, Ronnie. To be fair, I think it's easy to start classifying any criticism as just haters when you get as much hate as you do, sometimes unfairly so. But I promise you that this first part at least comes separate from that. The music, it's kind of corny. stars are living under your bed, cause they are the voices in your head. Credit to where it's due, the songwriting can be quite catchy and you've developed quite a following for a reason, but the lyrics are seriously dorky and often come off as from somebody who is like really struggling with their ego. I don't even disagree with a lot of the points made and the themes of the songs overall regarding like trolls, virtue signaling, etc. I even appreciate that you're willing to entertain perspectives of people across the political divide. It's just the delivery and the execution that just doesn't really work for me. Secondly, and related to the ego piece, you have got to stop responding to haters, especially smaller creators, with threats of violence. Stop it. 
get some help. Like, I get it, I respond to plenty of hate too, but I try to do so without threats or name calling even. Better to either embarrass them in some way, or see if you can even win them over if possible, or just give them the ultimate insult by ignoring them entirely. But just for instance, my buddy, The Metal Meltdown, criticized you on TikTok, and you literally threatened him in response. That's mad cringe. Just do better. And you and anyone else I talk about here too are as always welcome to come on the channel to chat it out. My main work is actually in mental health and counseling, so it could be interesting. That said, we're going to pure cringe for falling in reverse. Another one that was requested quite a bit and I was interested in was Behemoth. So I was kind of on the fence about this one, but I guess Nurgle definitely does go all in, maybe to a fault as sometimes, especially with the satanic shtick. In particular, I loved you at your darkest crossed a line for me into some truly eye roll inducing hot topic style moments. <laughs> I think that there are far worse out there, and largely their discography speaks for itself in terms of quality, but yeah, they're not free from cringe. I wouldn't put them pretty high. I think they're just kind of mild cringe. All right, I already alluded to this, so we might as well talk about Sabaton, and I can get why people find this cringe, like with the arguable romanticization of war to the super melodramatic vocals, but I gotta be honest, I was having more fun with this tier list this year than maybe any other. Like with choruses like this. <laughs> I am down for that cringe. Like, I'm I'm all in. Call me as cringe as you want. It is cringe, but it is fun. All right, next up, Miss May I was brought up a few times. I really don't have a lot to say about them. I just think they're very corny, paint-by-numbers, metalcore, just typical lyrics you'd expect from this style of the genre, especially on songs like You Want Me and Hey Mister. But honestly, I can somewhat get down to the music. It's not something I particularly enjoy, but I don't hate it either. Just could use a little bit more substance in my opinion. So yeah, this one's going to mid-level cringe right alongside their buddy's Parkway Drive. All right, another one that's going to probably ruffle some feathers. Let's talk about Burzum. So a lot of people complained on the previous list that there was not enough black metal representation last time, and that's totally fair. Like, there is so much just about this genre in general that could be criticized in the same way as something like new metal. But when it came down to thinking about the king of black metal cringe, it had to be Varg. <laughs> A lot of Burzum fans, again, gonna get bent out of shape with me saying that, but that's really just confirming my point about the type of people that worship this guy to such a cringy degree. I don't even hate Varg, and honestly, I find him to be kind of humorous at times, but his music outside of Philosophem, which I really enjoy, I've always found to be extremely dull, and more importantly, the dude was and still is the definition of an edgelord. It's just even more sad now coming from somebody moving into his 50s. So yeah, I'm putting Burzum and Varg by extension in very very cringe. All right, an interesting one that you could argue how metal they actually are, but let's talk about 30 Seconds to Mars. So number one, more kind of corny, Hot Topic style music, which, you know, I, I shopped plenty at Hot Topic. I still go in the stores sometimes. And also, I just had a great conversation on C Squared Music's channel about how this is exactly the type of stuff that X is a great gateway to new fans. And I will also admit that the kill still kind of slaps. But again, as is going to be kind of a trend at this level, a lot of this has to do with frontman Jared Leto. It's morning time. I used to really respect this guy as an actor. He's done some phenomenal roles, but ever since I think he won that Academy Award for Dallas Buyers Club, which again, he was a fantastic in, what the hell? <laughs> Like, I'm not going to get into it all here, but the channel Filion did an awesome breakdown of why he seriously sucks as a human being, and it goes way beyond just the cringy, culty stuff. So, yeah, 30 Seconds to Mars going to pure cringe. All right, I uh, saw a lot of Avenged Sevenfold, and I, I get it. I also found them kind of not only cringe, but even annoying, even when I was in high school and college. I've never been a big fan of M. Shadow's vocal style or the overall kind of bro vibe that he was sort of giving off at the time. But honestly, what bothered me most of all as a Terry Gilliam fan and overall just fan of film in general was the lame Bat Country videos butchering of Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. I'm Just rubbed me the wrong way. These days I've come to respect their incredible musicianship and ability to grow such, again, a loyal fan base, even if the lyrics and some of the other aspects can be corny. So I'm putting Avenged at mild cringe. All right, another one, Immure. So two words, 
Frankie Palmieri. Probably one of the most hated on people in the scene from his look to his behavior and right down to his lyrics, I can see why even if I've never really paid all that much attention to any of it and reading over some of the words from his songs isn't exactly a scholarly endeavor. That said, it's hard to not bang your head to this shit. Don't give up that what you think. I probably need to dig more into them to form a stronger opinion, but really I'm too busy enjoying Josh Miller's work with Chelsea Grin's Tom Barber on Darko. That said, I'm putting a mirror at cringe, but fun. All right, we can do Black Veil Brides, I guess another highly requested band, and the reasons are obvious to the point that I feel like they're almost too easy of a target in the same vein as something like Nickelback. Just overly saccharine, melodramatic, kind of dark romantic type of music that clearly appeals to mostly a young female fan base, which, hey, is a solid demographic if you're looking to make some money. That said, the music is lame, not terrible, not unlistenable, just lame and clearly just not made for someone like me and that's okay. So I'm putting them at mid cringe. <laughs> All right, let's do Hollywood Undead. So kind of another kind of an easy target, I would say, even as a kid who enjoyed bands with gimmicky looks like Slipknot, Mudvayne, etc., I took one look at these guys even at like 16 and rolled my eyes all the way into the back of my head. And I think that perfectly captures the vibe of their music overall with such amazingly poetic lyrics as bitches I hope you know baby come say hello and get your drunk ass over here let's bone these days it seems like they've kind of dropped the look in favor of jumping on kind of the more like ice nine kills train but the music is still as dorky as ever so why is my soul so Yeah, I'm putting Hollywood Undead at very cringe. All right, this one's a little bit personal, but let's talk about Pestilence and in particular their vocalist, Patrick. So yeah, again, I'm cheating a little bit because as far as the music goes, they're really a solid band. The main issue here again is guitarist and vocalist Patrick Mamelli, who has been fronting the band since around 1992. Dude has a lot of questionable social media posting, but worse than that and similar to what I said to Ronnie, he cannot take criticism and get seriously butthurt with even the smallest creators online. The breaking point was when Quest for Metal posted his Pestilence album ranking with the clear goal of praising the band's work, and Patrick's response was to repost it with a mocking headline about what Quest he had to say about his work. Even fans in the comments thought he was kind of being an idiot, but of course it was Mad Mike who responded with the ultimate takedown, which will have you laughing for days. However, I had to do this because if there's one thing I love more than anything in the whole wide world, it's mocking people who take themselves way too seriously, especially after they say shit like this. So thanks for watching, and Patrick, if you ever stumble upon this video, I hope you find it refreshing to hear from someone who actually has no clue. Piss off. Yeah, so more so Patrick, but Pestilence going to pure cringe. All right, who should I see here but Ghost? So this came up a lot and also initially surprised me as somebody who actually really enjoys their music, especially the new album. But yeah, the dramatic ongoing storyline and costuming, the vocal deliveries, the popular songwriting and lyrics. I can particularly see how people who only enjoy the more extreme side of metal would absolutely take a dump on this. But if you ask me personally, Ghost is no more cringe than the likes of Dio, King Diamond, or Alice Cooper. So I'm putting them at mild cringe. All right, Electric Callboy, formerly Eskimo Callboy, and I mean, talk about embracing the cringe. Like, yeah, they definitely take it to the extreme, and joke bands in general are not for everyone, but personally, I love to laugh, and these guys mostly just crack me up. It's cringe, but it's pretty intentional, very creative, it always puts me in a good mood, and it's also been a great gateway to show even non-metalheads at, like, parties and social gatherings. So I'm putting them at cringe, but fun. All right, bring me the horizon. So right from the beginning, even the albums that I joy from them, like, it's, <laughs> it's questionable. With lyrics like, mouth tastes like the corpse of every pregnant Pregnant teen. Disgusting! And then newer stuff like Parasite Eve is unquestionably catchy, but still very corny. They've also now gone kind of pop punk, so I actually give them credit too for being creative and always trying new things. It's just that the execution can be kind of hit and miss, so 
I'm putting them at mid cringe. <laughs> All right, dope. <laughs> so consider dope similar to my thoughts on head PE on the previous list and that the lyrics range from cringe to absolute dog shit. I went to try and pick some out, but there are so many examples it's hard to choose just one with tracks like Sex Machine, Bitch, and Let's Fuck. This is prime material for edgy 13 to 15 year olds. The difference is that head PE have some really diverse and well-performed music to distract from that and make it fun. I actually appreciate Dope's earlier days with the more industrial metal albums like Felons and Revolutionaries, and the riffs can be pretty fun at times, but their lyrics have always been the weakest part, and the music has only matched that corniness more and more as the years have gone by. Yeah, dope going to very cringe. And then let's talk about Shining. Another case of the vocalist being the biggest issue here, to the point where someone in the Discord described that there are several interviews from a few years ago where he said things along the lines of, my music is about encouraging people to destroy themselves, to fuck themselves up for the devil. And I thought he really put it perfectly in calling him a very misanthropic edgelord. Pretty par for the course for black metal on some level, but he takes it to a level that goes far beyond edgy and into some pretty darn shitty territory. The music can be good at times, honestly, but the imagery ranges from uncomfortable to downright harmful to the point that I probably can't show clips without at least demonetizing and age restricting the video. Quite frankly, he makes Varg look like Barney the Dinosaur. Just what I'm saying is that sit the fuck down. Sit down. No, you're not a dog. You're a dog. I will show you the devil when he comes up. <laughs> Give me this and you burn me. When El Dia Bruh, bruh, this hurts so bad. Oh, dude, it's f***ing black. I'm generally against the idea of trigger warnings, but in this case, I think I might actually make an exception. This guy just needs help, and he is going to pure cringe. Y'all check out this video if you missed part one, or this playlist for my most overrated albums list, and let me know down in the comments what do you think are the cringiest metal bands out there. But that'll do it for now. Flight of Icarus signing off. I will see you in the trenches.